Okay, so what we learned from the last, what we just wrote up was before, so we can write a couple different ways. So we can sum over all the possible number of successes up to n, and we sum the probability of k success in, in uh, n tries, in n trials, and that of course has to be equal to 1. Now we can also write that as k equals 0 to n, and we saw that we can write that as q, p to the k, q to the n minus k, so that's the probability of k successes and n minus k failures, and there was a coefficient that went in front, and it turns out that we, we write this as n choose k, so this is n choose k, and it's defined as n factorial over k factorial over n minus k factorial, where k fa n factorial, or anything factorial, is n times n minus 1 times n minus 2 da, 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 times 1. So this thing here always cancels to Right, this tends to n, n minus 1, all the way down to n minus k plus 1, because I've canceled all these, and then this is n minus k, n minus k minus 1, all the way down to 1. Okay? And so this gives, this is, <clears throat> this gives the coefficients, and this is called the binomial theorem, the fact that, that if I write n plus k, Q and raise it to the n when we expand it. The fact that the expansion of this polynomial has this form is the binomial theorem. And it's very useful because you discover that in our case, if this is true for any p and q, but in particular if they sum to 1, then this is just 1. Okay? If we have if. This is true in general for any numbers p and q, but if we set q equal to 1 minus p. Alright, so <clears throat> this gives the probability of having n successes in k trials. Okay, so if somebody asks you, you know, let's say you have a, let's say you have a, a coin which gives which gives equal probabilities to heads and tails, and you ask, what's the probability of three heads in uh, five tries? Well, that's just equal to p which is one half to the third. Q, which if I make it one, is also one half if I make them equal to the five minus three, which is two, and then the coefficient in front is five choose three. Okay? And notice it's not hard to see, but if five, five choose three is in fact equal to five choose two. Because once you've chosen, this is the way to choose three objects out of five, and once you've chosen three, it's the same as choosing, deciding which, which two not to choose, which is the same as this. And that all went back to the idea of counting paths in this triangle that we drew up, on, we had up on the board a moment ago, right? Because what we were interested in is counting the number of paths, right? So. So this one is exactly n equal, this is k equals uh, 2 at n equals 3. So this is the number of ways to, to choose two objects from three objects. And there's one way and two ways. And if I keep going, how many ways are there to choose just um, if, I'm, if I'm choosing three objects from from three things, there's only one way to choose it, which is this path, or this path. And so it really, that binomial coefficient is counting the probability of choosing three from four, three successes, three, of having three uh, successes in this. So that should be exactly, if let's say that p equals a half, then that should be, um, uh, 4 choose 3 times 1 half cubed times 1 half 4 minus 3, which is 1. And that's the answer. Okay, and then this is, of course, 4, if you write it out, 
is that's 4 factorial over 3 factorial, 1 factorial, times, this is 1 half to the 4, and this, if you cancel things out, the 3 factorial cancels the 3 to the 2 to the 1 up here, and this just becomes 4, 1 half to the 4. And as I said, this number here, 3 choose, 4 choose 3, just counts the number, where we had these circles up on the board, this is the n equals 0 level, this is the n equals 1 level, this is the n equals 2 level, this is the n equals 3 level, and finally, the n equals 4 level. And I want to look at k equals k equals 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. So I'm interested in the number of ways to get there, and the claim is that that's 4 choose 3, which should be 4. So let's see if there are four ways to get here, because that's the fourth level, choose three. Well, there's, there's one way there, there's another way, that's two, three, four. So there's four disjoint paths. I mean, by disjoint, I mean unique paths that are different paths. They're not disjoint, they share edges, but they are unique. They're right there, they're, they're a unique partition. Each, each, the sum of each of these is a different event, and the union of them is all the possible ways to do that. Alright, there's one more thing. Okay, there's one last thing I want to say about the binomial distribution, and that is to calculate what's often called the odds ratio, which is in the book written R of K, which is the probability of K success in n tries over the probability of k minus 1 success in n tries. And if you do the calculation, this is just n minus k plus 1 over k p q, which is 1 minus p. And we can use this to figure out if you plot the binomial distribution, then it will look something like that. And the question is, where is this peak? It's unimodal, that is to say it has one mode, one peak. This highest point is called the mode, and it need not be unique. There could be more than one mode. And our question is, where is the mode? Well, this ratio on the way up here, right, the next one is always bigger than the previous one, so it's greater than one. So this is R of K, here's K down here. This is the prob, this is R, this is the probability, P of K, let's call it. But R of K is greater than 1 here, and R of K is less than 1 here. And so to find the switchover point, we want to look at where R of K is um, R of K is greater than 1, greater than or equal to 1. And if you solve that, what we find is that we want. 1 less than or equal to n minus k plus 1 over k p 1 minus p. It's just writing this in. And if you solve that, you'll find that k has to be less than or equal to n p plus p. And now since k has to be an integer, the mode is equal to the, the integer part of n p plus p. Now, if it turns out that this is an integer, then there's actually two of them right next to each other which have the same value. Okay, so for instance, if uh, p equals a half and n is odd, then the mode, then the probability of the mode, or the probability, if we call this, let's call this m, this number, the probability of m equals the probability of m plus 1. But it doesn't, sometimes it's unique, sometimes it's not unique. But in any case, this is somehow the center of this distribution, the place where it peaks, is given by this value, which is called the mode. Well, any value where it's the maximum is called a mode, and this will give you one of the modes at least. And if there's more than one, you may have to look on either side of it.